Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to go through a past exam question. This one is on genetics and specifically pedigree diagrams. I would say that the difficulty level on this question is hard. Um, you'll find it quite a lot easier if you are very well versed in how to use a pedigree diagram. This one I have said it's hard um, only because if you get the first answer wrong, it leads to the rest of the answers being incorrect, which generally increases the difficulty level in these kinds of exam questions. And most importantly, if you do get the identification of the genetic disorder wrong, it's also going to influence how you do the genetic cross in the last question of this exam question. So... We've got to keep our eyes peeled for these ones. Um, they are sometimes in disguise as looking easy, but often don't give you the results you are looking for. Now, if you do like this video, make sure to put your subscription notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday and especially coming up to exams. I'm sure you want to do as many of these as possible. So let's get into the video and break down the question. It says the diagram below shows the pattern of inheritance of deafness in a family. The letter H represents the allele for hearing and the lowercase h represents the allele for deafness. Now, um, there's a couple of things they're telling you here before we go any further. And this is why you need to get it right from the very beginning so you don't make any mistakes. First things first, we need to decide, is this an autosomal cross or is this a sex-linked cross? Now, the clue that this is a autosomal cross is that they have provided us only the letters H, capital H, and lowercase h. That means this is an autosome disorder. It's not sex-linked because if it was sex-linked, they would have given the letter X with a H on the top, which we already know is hemophilia, but in the instance of this example, just using the same letter. So we know that it is not sex-linked. It's definitely an autosomal. And then we need to figure out, is this an autosomal dominant disorder or a autosomal recessive? Now it says the letter capital H represents the allele for hearing. So if you have at least one capital H, you will be able to hear. And then it says a small H represents the allele for deafness, which means if you have two small H's, you will be deaf. Now, if you're uncertain as to how I made that decision, remember there are three possible genotype allocations. There can be two capital H's, which means somebody can hear. A capital H and a lowercase h, which is when they're heterozygous, these people also can hear. But if they have two lowercase h's, they are deaf. And so that's how we know this is an autosomal disorder. And that's the allocations of the individuals in this pedigree. Now, this is a really important step. A lot of people skip over this and they go straight to the questions. Again, if you want full marks at the end of the year and in your exams, take your time, do this properly, and you will get full marks. Now, they've been great in giving you the first two individuals over here, um, and they've provided you with their genotypes already for John and Linda, which is very helpful. But what I suggest you do is go in and fill everybody else in. Now, um, Linda does have the disorder. As we can see, she's got two small H's. And if I go in and fill in Lyle, they will also have two small H's. Now, um, we've got Gabby, Paul, Fiona, and Mika, and they all need alleles as well. So I'm going to fill them in too. Now, the fact that the rest of the family does not have the disorder means that everybody else in this picture must be at least one capital H. So I'm going and I'm going to fill in that capital H for everybody. Now I need to determine the other allele. Now we are going to use the law of segregation, which is when it is uh, a separation of alleles in parents. And what that means is only one allele can come from each parent. So you cannot inherit two alleles of the same kind from one parent. In other words, Paul and Fiona are John and Linda's children, which means, looking at the two parents, John gave them his capital H, but Linda only has two small H's to offer, which means their other allele must be a small letter H. 
Now let's go over to Gabby. Now, Gabby is a little more tricky because she is an outsider and she's joined the family. So we're going to have to look at her children to help us answer this. Now, if we look at Lyle, Lyle is very important to tell us what Gabby is because if Lyle inherits one allele from each parent, he has inherited one small h from his father, Paul. And the only other person he can inherit a small h from is Gabby. And we know that Gabby's other letter is a capital H because she doesn't have the disorder, right? Right. Now, the very final person. This is Mika. Now, Mika is interesting because Mika can actually inherit two different sets of alleles. Mika can inherit one capital allele from mom and one capital allele from dad and end up like this. Or they can inherit one capital H from one parent and one lowercase h from the other parent, which is very possible. And so Mika actually has two genotypes, which is possible. And sometimes they will ask you that. And now that we've gone through this, and I know that it feels like it's so much effort, but you'll see now we'll be able to quickly speed over the questions. First of all, number one, it says how many of each of the following are represented in this diagram? So first thing first, how many are males? Now, this is important to know what the circles and squares mean. You cannot just rely on names. Please know that squares are always males. And so that means we've got three males in this diagram. Then it asks you how many generations there are. Well, there are three generations. We've got one generation, two generation, and our third generation. So let's move on to our next question. It says, give the phenotype of John. And let's not forget that phenotype means physical characteristic. John can hear. And we know that he can hear because he has at least one capital letter or one dominant allele. Then it says, give the genotype. Please don't get geno and phenotype confused. They love to put one after the other in exams to sort of like catch you in the moment. So the genotype of Paul, we've already calculated it earlier, which is going to make this really nice and easy. It's capital H, small h. Then it says both Lyle's parents can hear, which is true, Paul and Fiona, yet he is deaf. Explain how he inherited his deafness. Now, the fact that you've already done the calculations for Lyle over here means that this is going to make your life a lot easier. Now, you will see it is only two marks and it is an explain question. So remember, for every explain question, you provide a statement and then you provide a reason. So our statement is going to be that deafness is recessive and he the reason for this is he then needs to inherit one allele from each parent and that's what's going to get you two out of two always give a statement a reason for an explanation now the last question here says Lyle marries a woman who is homozygous dominant for hearing. Use a genetic cross to show the percentage chance of them having a deaf child. Now, before we do that genetic cross, we need to determine what this woman is. She is homozygous dominant, and homo means the same, which means she's going to have two capital letter H's. We've established that Lyle is two small H's. Now, before I even do the whole genetic cross, I have enough experience already to know what the answer is going to be. And you might too. And I'm not going to draw the whole cross out to save time. So instead, what I'm going to do is say, well, if the woman is two capital H's, and Lyle is two small h's, I already know that all the children are going to be capital H, small h. And if I do a quick Punnett square here alongside, you'll see what I mean. Every single one of the children will inherit at least one capital H, which means what is the chance of them having a deaf child? The chance is zero percent it is not possible because in order for us to have a deaf child you need two small h's and so that's not the case now of course this is not how we 
um, are going to lay out our genetic cross. Remember, the genetic cross is when you have, you know, your P1, your gametes, your fertilization, your F1, and that kind of thing. And I'm going to show you the memo now so you can see and compare. Now, here is the memo, so you're more than welcome to go through it and have a closer look at what they have ticked. Um, I just want to bring your attention to 224. That was, of course, the genetic cross. There are two answers here, just so that you know. Um, there is an or. So, in other words, you could give either the top option or the bottom option. But again, as you can see, they are 100% hearing. So, so none of them are deaf. So 0% are deaf. And you've got two ways you can work it out. My advice is to always use a Punnett square. I do not like line diagrams. I'm really not a big fan of them. Um, they often lead to inaccuracies and mistakes. Um, but it depends, of course, on what your teacher has taught you and what you feel comfortable with. But I would often do this option over here. This is the much clearer, simpler, less likely to get wrong option. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.